Hi and welcome to Project and Things. My name's Eve. In this video, we're going to finish my sauna. One of the first things I did after the roof was installated was cut another hole in it and make the passageway for the stovepipe to go out. I drew a few lines through the diameter to find the center and then drilled a pilot hole all the way through to the roof to find out exactly where this thing was going to exit. When I climbed up on my roof, I realized there was a whole bunch of overgrowth from a nearby tree that had to go. And my son decided he wanted to help me. Using the pilot hole on the outside, I could find out where the center of my stovepipe was going to be. And then I cut out the hole using an angle grinder and later a jigsaw. The roof setup is fairly straightforward. It's, uh, it's a sheet of OSB followed by a... I don't really know what it is. When the hole was big enough for the stovepipe to go through, I made a few extra cuts in order for the least amount of wood to physically touch the stovepipe. This pipe is insulated, but still I don't want too much of the roof to actually touch it. Once I found a placement for the stovepipe, it was time to move the actual stove into the sauna. This thing gets delivered from the factory Paint it in this black layer that has an enormous smell to it. So the first firing you want to do outside before you move the thing inside. I slid the stove into place on a towel in order to not scratch up the floor too much. And what I'm measuring here is the minimum distance the stove has to be from the walls in order to not burn them. Then I manhandled the pipe through the roof and I was very happy when the thing was in place. On the outside, the hole was covered using a rain cover and some silicone caulking. And then this thing bolts down into the roof using screws with a rubber seal on it. And the final touches was a rain cover that just screws onto the top of the stovepipe. The next morning it was very, 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 very cold. So it was time to fire up the stove and work in warmth, in nice warmth. With the stovepipe in place, I could actually finish up the ceiling slats all the way to the end. I ended up using a handsaw for some of the tricky bits around the door because it was much easier to go back and forth and move little pieces at a time until it fit perfectly.
slats in place, I could finally put the last pieces of the wall in so that they would fit snugly under the roof. When building sauna walls, you leave some gaps in the corners for the wood to expand with the heat and contract later. You don't want them to be right up against each other in the corners. So you get these little cover things, I don't know what they're called, but you basically hammer those into the corner to cover up all the gaps that you leave while building it. Then it was time to work on the door. I put in place a rolling sauna lock that keeps the door tightly shut but can be opened easily just by pushing it. There's no physical locking mechanism for safety purposes. Then with some leftover pieces of wood, I trimmed out my door, just because it looks better. And then it was time to make the benches. Uh, you don't have to worry too much about where I made these, that's news for a future video. I bought some thicker pieces of wood called abachi to be the supports for the sauna benches and on top there would be smaller versions of the same slats for sitting on. This is a fairly simple construction using some wood glue and screws to hold everything together. To hold most of these bench parts in place I used pocket holes which are essentially hidden compartments in which you can put a screw and then later you can cover this with stuff but it's mostly I like it mostly because you can hide screws in material while screwing two things together. In this situation I use the pocket screws because you don't want any metal pieces sticking out where you can touch them because they will get very very hot inside the sauna. When the first one was finished, I made a tinier version that goes into the other corner, which is the one I'm sitting on right now. When the glue had dried, I fit the pieces into place using a laser to keep a perfect level and a lot of finger spits in the food because this was trickier than I thought. The final touches to these benches were the actual slats on top. Those had to be put in in place here. I drilled a number of pocket holes all the way around the perimeter 
and then used glue and clamps to hold everything in place. I glued the slats down, clamped them and then screwed them from the bottom in these pockets so that everything would form one unit when the glue had dried. The design for these top benches was something I stole from the design of my bottom bench, which is one that I bought to see how these things are actually constructed. Then when these top benches were finally in place, it was time to fill the sauna with the sauna rocks. Final touches included covering the ventilation hole with something nice to open and close it and to hang the lights behind me which gives the coziest of light when you're in here. So now, if you will excuse me, I'm going to take a well-deserved sauna break. Until next time, bye. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you like these things I do, please consider subscribing. I also have other videos you can watch all about making stuff. Um, so thank you, until next time, bye.